Today, you're gonna to learn about HTTP status code 503, what it is, why it's important, and what to do about it. We're also gonna do a comprehensive overview of the HTTP protocol in general, kind of some of the basics on how the internet works and how they all affect the status codes that your website is returning. My name is Tommy Griffith with clickminded.com. Let's get going. So before we dive into HTTP status code 503, I wanna talk a little bit about the HTTP protocol in general, how the internet works, and how all this stuff affects the status codes on your website. The internet is made up really of two core things, and that's clients and servers, right? So you have clients, web clients, that's your browser, right? Maybe it's Chrome, maybe it's Firefox, maybe it's Safari. If you're a godforsaken human being, maybe it's Internet Explorer. But if you're, <laughs> you're usually accessing the internet through one of these clients, right? Whenever you request a website, you're usually making a request from a web server. You make a request and the server responds. That's happening every single time you're clicking a link. You make this request using what we call the HTTP protocol. Okay, so protocols are really just standards that everyone on the internet has agreed to. It's no different than English or Spanish or Chinese. It's a language that we've all agreed to, right? So a client makes a request to the server, what happens next? Status codes let us know whether the request was a success, a failure, or something in between, right? That's what an HTTP status code is. Okay, so let's jump into each one of these next. So the 100 block, these are informational requests. Uh, the 200 block, those are successful requests. The 300 block are gonna be for redirects, redirection. 400 block will be for client errors and 500 block will be for server errors. So that means the client made a good request, but the server didn't complete it. So something is wrong on the server side. Right? I'm in Chrome, I request the website. I did everything right on my end, but something's wrong with the server, right? So like a 500, an internal server error, maybe a 502, bad gateway, 503, service unavailable, 504, gateway timeout. The broad idea here is that 500 errors are server problems, not client problems. Okay, so HTTP status code 503, service unavailable. So this, again, it's on the 500 block of the row of the uh, status code that means it's a server error not a client error right the 503 is very similar to the 500 error a 503 means the server is unavailable just like the 500 error the difference however is that a 503 error is usually an expected error right that means something like you didn't pay your bill maybe the plan that you're on with your web host doesn't allow for that many requests a 500 error is an unexpected general error it usually means like hey, we don't know what happened, but something went bad with the server. A 503 error means, hey, something bad went, something went bad with the server, but we know what happened. In most, in, in every case, you still need to get in touch with your web host and try and get them to figure it out. But usually the difference is a 503 error is like an intentional server error, whereas a 500 error is a more general kind of unintentional error. And so that's it. That's really all there is to the HTTP status code 503 error. So I hope that was useful, if it was helpful, and if you learned something today, go ahead and click subscribe down below for even more digital marketing tactics and tips from us. If you're on YouTube, I'd love a comment. What'd you think? Are you seeing 503 server errors? How are you gonna deal with them? Do let us know what's going on. I read every single one. Finally, if you want our comprehensive free HTTP status code guide, along with a tool to check all of your URLs and the status codes that they're returning, go ahead and click that link down below to clickminded.com to get your free status code guide and tool now. Thanks a lot.